Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, being here at this uh, amazing conference. Um, AgTech is uh, very close to my heart. I've worked in the agribusiness sector all my life. Um, so from my accent, you'll hear that I'm uh, South African born. Um, but I have been, been around uh, a bit, um, studied agriculture in Israel, uh, and then went on to do business studies further on uh, back in South Africa, but have worked and lived um, in four, four continents, in four countries, and um, arrived in Australia in uh, 2009. Prior to that was in New Zealand, prior to that in Israel, and prior to that in South Africa, but um, always in ag business. Um, the topic of adoption of agri-technology has been in the forefront of my mind and uh, my daily routine on a daily basis and um, the challenges are, are amazing um, but I think that we've made great strides and uh, Graham in his presentation spoke about some of them. I'd like to enhance on that and uh, just add to, to some of those things. Um, so filled in is a, um, a company that focuses on something slightly different. So forget about the, uh, the actual facts of where that comes from, but I think the, the trend is very, very classic um, across the globe. And that is that the pressure on farming, like many other businesses, is growing. Um, operational costs are going up, uh, margins um, are tight, and therefore, every gain that can be made on an operational level is vital, crucial, and um, ultimately will lead to the success or failure of any business. Um, so Fielding chose, and Astore earlier on um, alluded to the fact that we, we're not based on rocket science. We haven't invented something new. What we're doing is answering the pain points of, of a need of the farming community um, worldwide, and we believe that uh, we're doing it in a, in a manner that possibly uh, some others may not be doing, and we're providing it in a bite-sized, chewable, actionable manner so that it, ca that it can produce tangible return on investment for, for the, op for the uh, person using our product. Um, so what we do is we create full visibility. I think one of the problems of any operator today, someone running a farming business, is that there are so many factors that come that, that are in, at play. There are so many things that um, you're involved in, so many things you need to be on top of, and not always is there full visibility of all those factors. So what we do is we create that ability. We take away um, the shroud. We take away the fact that there's just too much data, um, and we create it, we present it, in a manner that is both actionable. We don't only present a summary of the data. What we do is we try and present it in a manner that can be meaningful to the manager on site so that you can take actionable in insights to correct and amend and improve on a continuous basis. So those insights we want to enable optimal efficiency and accuracy. So just to, to, to recap, we're not focused on the agronomy. There are so many out there that are. We're focused on a very, very niche area, and that is operational efficiency. And when you talk about operational efficiency, we're talking about the operations on farm. In other words, what does that tractor do on a daily basis? One day it's rigged up to this piece of machinery, tomorrow it's rigged up to another piece of machinery, and we track exactly what every piece of machinery does, we present that to you, we make the comparisons between operators, we see and we close the loop of that data. So um, I'll show you later on exactly how we do that. So we like to, pres to present ourselves as a centralized control center for efficient data-driven farms. Now, becoming a data-driven farm um, may seem extremely daunting, may seem very complicated, but ultimately most farming uh, operations are doing this. Um, we just enable this, um, we believe, in a more comprehensive uh, fashion. So we, we digitize the farm. Obviously, it's all uh, mapped, et cetera, et cetera. We break it up into mappable entities where we can monitor exactly what goes on within that 
area, what goes on outside of that area. Um, and we can time everything so we know exactly what is happening, how long you're spending outside of that area and why you're spending it there so that you can close the loop. Um, once it is digitized, then you have um, a place where it is all on one dashboard, it's easily accessible and you have it all in front of you. So it's all visible. And thereafter, we provide, we leverage that data to create the inputs that actually add value. And that, I believe, is the key. Um, you know, the, the organizers have, have asked all of us to not only speak about what, what we offer, but also what are some of the issues that we've tried to address here with regards to uptake of, of uh, technology. And one of those things, we believe, is the fact that um, in some cases, there's probably just an abundance of data, and not all of it is that actionable, and not all of it is, it, is that si insightful, that people sometimes have the tendency to say, just TMI, and it's too hard. Um, so we focus on, on uh, three, key er three key areas, um, smart scouting and spraying, smart cultural practices, and smart harvesting. So the smart cultural practices are those normal things that get, day, get done on a daily basis on a farm. And I just sort of, I'm just going to backtrack here slightly. Our main focus is in, um, in horticulture, in tree crop crops, in permanent crops, um, less so on, uh, on broadacre. Um, but the same principles could be applied there. We just uh, have focused on, that's where we've focused our attention so far. So in the tree crops, we've focused on um, almonds, citrus, um, grapes, olives, etc., etc., uh, stone fruit. Um, we're now rolling into, into vegetables. Um, but the bread and butter is those permanent crops. So when we talk about smart cultural practices, you'll be um, weeding, you'll be doing all sorts of things in your, in your, um, uh, in your orchard on a, on a regular basis. Um, and we have the, the, uh, the module that uh, focuses on that. Obviously, we connect that with a module that looks at um, the scouting and the spraying, and then it comes to the harvesting, and it, you close the loop. Um, so... As I alluded earlier, it is all about adoption. Um, ultimately, there in today, you know, there are more and more technology companies out there. Um, there are more and more solutions to to some issues. Um, the question is, how much of that is being adopted? So I think, from our perspective, the thing, the driving force behind how we have approached what we offer is to make it and ensure relevance. So. We have to address those pain points. What are the pain points? What are the things that the farmer actually wants? And in some cases, and as I say, I have been around the ag tech space for quite a while, as some of you may notice, um, but um, there are companies out there that ultimately, and I think a story um, in one of his slides spoke about the fact that sometimes it's more about uh, the technology and less so about the need of the farmer. So we, our approach is obviously the need of the farmer, so we address those pain points. And... Um, when we, when we do that, we look at, um, at the value that we can give and the insights that we can provide, and those, those uh, insights need to be easily identified and measurable. Um, one of the other things is that some companies, um, possibly by virtue of the fact that we are a service-oriented business, and similar to the earlier presenter, our main focus is less so on the pre-sale, our main focus is on the after-sale. So we will handhold our client for life. We are there today to provide input on a daily basis because we operate on a SaaS model, service as a software as a service, and we're only as good as today that we're providing you value. If tomorrow you decide that we're not providing you value, we're out of there. So we don't charge you for uh, the sensors that we put onto your gear. At the end of the day, that's our method of doing business. What, what we charge you for is a per hectare cost of providing you with the service and the insights that we can deliver. Obviously, it needs to be seamless and integration. The previous presenter spoke about how important that is, and we fully integrate with a number of, of uh, providers because otherwise, one of the other issues that I think is um, 
very hard for um, the users of the technology is that there sometimes are multiple dashboards, multiple places to go for your information, and if it's not integrated, it just makes life very hard. Um, so here are some examples of how Fieldin addresses some of the key adoption issues. So with regards to, to relevance and growing and the growers' pain point, uh, for example, improving spraying visibility. So when an agronomist provides a recommendation of this is what you should be applying and this is how I want you to apply it, there is no manner, easy manner, for unless you actually um, are right, driving right behind that the person who's applying. And when you talk about farm, big farms, so we, our, our technology, really our market, is for the operators of about 300 hectares and more. Um, unfortunately, by virtue of the fact that um, you know a smaller operator can probably get on top of this without us, we're really being the, we're there for the bigger grower who, without us, would possibly find it a little bit more difficult. Um, so, what are the things that that you need to know in order to make sure that actually you're closing that loop because you've given the recommendation? How do you know that that recommendation has actually been fulfilled and done to your recommendation, and that there haven't been double ups or you haven't missed rows or your um, um, your sprayer has been calibrated correctly. You're applying the right amount of liters per per hectare, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we do that. Sorry, oh, oh, I jumped the gun there. Um, sorry, I just um, so that was uh, sorry. I've been on that slide. So another method way in which we um, we do this is by. Um, with closing the pest management cycle. So, for instance, our, our scouting um, uh, app allows us to be in the field, take a photo, have it uploaded, um, cite the pest, cite the infestation rate. That goes back to uh, the agronomist who then can make the recommendation as to uh, what needs to be applied. We then manage it. Um, we do the live spraying. We can track exactly whether you know what rows have been sprayed, at what speed that the the sprayer is going, what the output of the sprayer is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we can provide that report afterwards for someone to see. Hang on a second, there was a missed row here, or this section wasn't sprayed, or this section was sprayed too much or too little or too fast. Um, the wind at the you know at this stage was too uh, too fast, uh, too uh, strong for them to be applying it at that rate, and therefore the efficacy is not going to be great. That can be looped thereafter to your production, because at the end of the day you have a record of how that spray was applied. You then know what your pest pressure is afterwards. You then know what implication it has on your yield, and you can basically connect the dots thereafter and realize that actually your efficacy wasn't that great because of the fact that it was sprayed at this rate or that rate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, relevance and value, um, comparing output and efficiency. So we can... Um, we can compare operators. Now, this is not big daddy stuff. This is purely for the purpose of being able to have an, uh, lift the veil so that you know this operator was functioning at uh, 5.2 kilometers an hour. This operator was functioning at 3.7 kilometers per hour. Your recommendation was six for both of them. What is the result of both of them operating at those either suboptimal or, or, or optimal um, levels. Um, you can then have a chat with that grower, with that operator, and, and say, "Mate, um, you know, what was the reason?" You can inter interrogate the system, and you can, through the histogram that appears at the bottom of the screen, there, you can see every single second where what is happening. In other words, did did he stop because uh, he had a uh, an engine failure? Did he stop because uh, he had to go and uh, refill? Uh, water into the sprayer um, at a time that wasn't um, optimal. Did your refill? Should you move your refill point, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. It enables you to make all those uh, calculations and decisions that are actionable that can actually improve the system. Uh, we found that, and obviously this is all done through a f through an operator ID. So every operator has a fob. He tags on, or she tags on um, when she gets or gets into the tractor or the implement. And you can either have it by name, you can have it anonymous, you can have it however you like. But at the end of the day, that information is there, and you can act on that.
Now, what are the financial impacts of, uh, of these comparisons? So, for example, um, you know, the efficient operator um, is costing you such and such per, uh, per hectare per season, 540. Um, the inefficient operator is costing $800 per, per, per uh, hectare per season. Um, how does this apply to, uh, to the agro agronomic uh, impact of this, et cetera, et cetera? All of these things have an impact, and we can provide these reports and these insights so that you have the ability to realize that by making these small changes, you can improve. And by virtue of the fact that we do this not only on a daily basis, we provide these reports at different levels on a daily basis to the level that needs it on a daily, um, to the, uh, on, a, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a seasonal basis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we provide customized reports. So, for example, um, and customized alerts and reports. So on your, S on your phone, you will receive a, an alert if, for instance, something happened that is outside those predetermined um, parameters. Um, you will get a customized report um, based on anything and everything that you desire. So we will slice and dice that information. We need, we are a data company. We take that data and we slice and dice it according to the needs of the company. And that is where our flexibility of working with the grower on a customized basis, a certain level manager, whether it be um, uh, the farm manager, will want something different to the regional manager. We can do that. As long as we've got the data, we can do that for you. And as long as it's deriving value for you, we will do that. Um, so, for example, um, you have uh, obviously a traffic light system here. Um, you have the average where you want to be, the desired area. And at a, at a glance, any manager will be able to see that this proportion of people is within sync or without sync. Um, actionable insights translate to proven results. Uh, this is just an example how over, how over a season or over a period we've been able to make a difference to a grower by providing this information. Um, once again, a similar kind of story. I'm, I'm sorry that I'm rushing through this, but I'm, I'm looking at Andy's clock here and uh, I don't have much time left. So one of the things I, I guess that is um, uh, critical to, to any business is... Um, being able to prove yourself on the ground. So, for instance, without mentioning too many names, um, the reason why we are set up here in Australia is not because we didn't have the vision of coming here, but it was brought forward by a very um, wonderful opportunity that a multinational large almond grower in America that was using our services in America saw how fantastic our product was for them, and after two years they turned around to their Australian comp counterparts, not at our request, their own in, uh, initiative and said, guys, you've got to come to California to see what we've been working with Fielding for. Um, they came and uh, we did a trial for them here locally on one farm with one of the modules. They saw that it is really beneficial to them and now, six months later, they've done a full rollout on the entire almond operation and that's what basically brought us here. So we came on a silver platter, really. Um, but uh, it was always our intention to be here. Australia is an amazing market for us. Um, we're based in Mildura, but we will, our reach is basically, the, uh, for the moment, Riverina all the way down to the Adelaide Hills. And we'd love to be able to uh, uh, work with uh, some of you in the room and many of you outside the room as well. I'm just going to share with you um, this video here, which I... Uh, Logan Henderson, I'm the Agronomy and Technical Services Director for AgriCare Incorporated. Uh, we're currently in one of our Caracara blocks. Uh, this is Patterson 6C. So it's one of our, our longtime growers. Uh, we as a management company have been growing for them for over 20 years. So, uh, so we've been using Filled In for three years now. Uh, we're continuing to add pieces to the platform as they develop um, and as we grow and, and uh, utilize it differently. Um, so the first, first benefit from Field In that we saw was uh, immediate visibility from our spray team standpoint. Um, we use it to track all of our infield sprays. Uh, so real-time GPA, um, RPMs, percent complete, ground speed, um, flow meter uh, information. Uh, so we have real-time visibility as far as REI, PHI, um, and materials used. 
that's available from our management team all the way down to our field team. I'm Maisie Jamison. I've been working here at AgriCare almost two years now and we've been using field in a little bit before I started here so I kind of came in mid kind of working with them. So the scouting side of field in has definitely helped simplify our PCA's reporting job. Just the communication side of it. It's replaced our handwritten notes. It if, some, if our PCA is out in a field, I can see immediately what block he's been in, where he's kind of figure out where he's heading next. We can see trends that same day rather than waiting for him to come back into the office and be like, oh yeah, we have an issue here. And it's just made the communication among our team immensely just more efficient. During the summer months, um, for citrus specifically, we have to spray at night. Um, there's a lot of reasons for it. But it, it has been difficult in the past as you've got various crews out and about um, going around and checking and, and having that, that checks and balances, making sure what's on the wreck um, from a ground speed standpoint uh, is being followed, making sure everything is, is going kosher, making sure a breakdown's being addressed as quick as possible. Um, all of that has been made much easier from field in. Um, we've had numerous operators that have worked for us for 16 plus years. Um, we got a good relationship with those guys. That being said, this is a tedious job and, and as you're, I mean, these guys will spray 40 to 60 acres in a night sometimes. Um, you do miss rows and you do double spray and that's part of this job. So it does help us, you know, where we did miss rows specifically to make sure we know where those are. Um, from a field checking standpoint, we can go out and make sure that, that any, any pest problems that are resulting from that, uh, they are addressed real time. Yeah, ROI specifically, uh, efficiency of sprays, um, and, and then a dressel of uh, any uh, any performance issues from a RPM standpoint where uh, you were running a tractor a little too hard from a maintenance standpoint and you didn't realize it. Um, you can tell when a PTO has been engaged, so you can tell as you pull into a block um, whether a PTO is engaged properly or not. Uh, that's helped us with, with maintenance dollars. Um, looking at, uh, just from a spray efficacy standpoint, ground speed and whether your booms turned on at the right time or not, or whether one or, or the other boom turned off for some reason during the field, um, it helps us address hot spots and not need to retreat nearly as often. Yeah, and I, I mean, honestly, um, you guys have been fantastic. There is no other company that we've worked with. Um, I've been here since 2012 and worked with dozens upon dozens of tech companies. Um, nobody has come close to your guys' customer service or ability to implement uh, our, our comments and suggestions um, and integrate into the system rapidly. So I really, it's been, it's been impressive. That's the biggest reason why, why we're here. Um, you know, there's other companies that do what you guys do, but customer service wise, um, it's been great, top notch. Please join me in thanking Cedric.